Hey everybody, how we doing today? It's going to be a beautiful day or a stretch of days coming up. But uh, before I could take an advantage of that, I'd need to do a little bit of chores and specifically some real maintenance. Uh, these are my Quantum Cabo 40s. Uh, they're my go-to everyday backcountry flash, inshore fishing, reef reel setups. Um, I match them with my Esky uh, two medium lights and one medium action rod. Um, right now, one is dead in the water. Uh, this one is basically one to two steps from being dead in the water. And I've got one that's in pretty decent condition, just needs a little bit of a touch up. So I figured I'll go through that real quick and then uh, we'll be able to get on the water. So I've got some repairs to do on these reels and actually some of them are very common issues with these Quantum Cabos. One of them has to do with this bale here. Um, instead of a spring action, it uses a magnet and a reverse polarity in order to put the pressure on the bale to stay closed. So usually you'll force it till it opens and it'll click open. But then as soon as you bring it in a little bit, it'll snap closed. Uh, same when, when you turn the handle. Um, like I said, instead of a, str a spring like uh, most reels use, these Cabos use a magnet and then a reverse polarity on the bail arm in order to uh, create that tension. Unfortunately, what happens is this is a magnet and it usually has a clear coating on it, but salt water gets underneath it and it gets to this magnet and then it starts rusting and corroding. It expands. This one was expanded enough where it popped out the pin. Uh, also what it'll do is it'll start cracking and then falling out in chunks. So I could probably go in and sand this down till it's flush, put it some, um, some uh, a glue along the top of it to seal it and that'll get me through a month or two but I think I'm just gonna swap it out here in its entirety. Uh, this one here has an issue with a anti-reverse going bad. That's a very common problem with these Cabos. Uh, they basically give you the kit to repair it because I think it's such a common issue. Uh, basically what that is is that when you get a hook a fish, it starts taking off. The, the anti-reverse is meant to be a one-way gear basically, so you can reel in one direction but you can't go the opposite direction to unfurl the line so it basically locks it down and then it puts all the pressure on the drag system uh, what happens with mine being bad is the fish will start taking off and then if i'm not holding the handle it'll let go and it'll start spinning in reverse and i always get my knuckles busted because of that and the only way to stop it is to grab the handle that stops that reverse turning and then it goes back onto the drag and then I could use it like usual. I just can't let go of the handle. So it's kind of a pain there. This one's actually in fairly decent condition. Uh, it's starting to have the bail issue. It's kind of sticky, crunchy there. So I need to take those apart. It doesn't look like it's a rusty expansion. It might just be corrosion there. Um, all three of them, I need to go through the drag systems and clean up the discs. Uh, you get a lot of salt buildup in there. And then I'll go through all of the uh, bodies, internals, all the gears, take those out, give them a wipe down, degrease them, and then re-grease and oil everything and put them back. I don't think I have any um, bearing issues right at the moment, so I think we're okay there, but I'll know more once I take them apart. All right, our equipment list. I have a basic screwdriver set. Uh, I've got a Torx screwdriver set. The uh, Cabos use that for the covers, which is actually very nice. Um, then I've got some pen reel grease, some corrosion stop. I'd use WD-40, whatever. I really don't use this spray too much, except for the main shaft. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I put a light coating of grease on it just for corrosion resistance and then a bunch of paper towels to wipe all the gunk out of them. And you gotta have the parts. So this is my parts department. I have pretty much everything to rebuild the, the 40 series, 50 series, and the 60 series Cabos. Uh, I've got tons and tons of uh, bearings, bushings. Uh, I've got the, uh, the rotors, bell arms, bales, uh, O-rings, washers, nuts bolts, pretty much everything. Uh, I've got probably enough parts here 
to just buy three brand new reels, but then I would need parts for those reels. So it's kind of like, this is actually the better way to go about it. Just keep the ones going that I've got. Um, but yeah, gotta have it. got the uh, backing plate uh, soaking in some white vinegar as there's a bunch of components that are stuck in there uh, so I'm letting that vinegar go to work and it's definitely eating something on there uh, one of the gears is just bubbling like crazy pretty cool so hopefully it softens it all up and then I'm able to remove the rest of the components All right, we're all done. Got all three reels uh, up and running. I'd say they're probably about 90% to uh, new. Uh, having been beaten up so bad, that's actually pretty good. Uh, ended up changing out two rotors and two bell arms because of the rust. Uh, one anti-reverse, um, probably about eight bearings had rusted out and were kind of grindy, so I swapped those out. An O-ring. Um, I actually took way too long. I should have broke these down a lot earlier. Uh, one of them, I had a really bad time getting the uh, guts out, the main worm gear out of it. It was just locked in there. I tied wires to it. I had to tie the wire to the uh, my car's uh, trailer hitch to try to pop it out. Um, hammer and a chisel. I was trying wedging it with a screwdriver and none of those things are good with these plastic uh, bodies here. But uh, fortunately I was able to get it out without damaging anything seriously. I was very amazed that I finally got it pulled out. Um, did a lot of soaking. It took two days because I had to soak a lot of this stuff in uh, vinegar to uh, break down the corrosion and the rust. Uh, but yeah, I need to kind of go on more of a three to four week cycle so that stuff doesn't build up. But otherwise, uh, we're good to go. Alrighty, we're all up and running, all three rails ready to go out and catch some fish. Um, very important process, uh, just I don't think a lot of people think about it. It's not all just fun and going out fishing. These things happen. I basically do this breakdowns. I try to do them about once a month. Uh, because my reels get inundated with salt water pretty much every trip. It's like dousing them straight into the ocean and taking them out. Uh, eventually the corrosion builds up to the point where they're not usable. I tried to not to go that far, but uh, this one was kind of a, I let it go way too far where I was breaking, physically breaking things and they weren't physically working anymore. So that was rough. Uh, whenever you're using a hammer and a chisel to try to take apart your your mostly plastic and pot metal reel, it's it's not good. I mean, when I was out there with uh, uh, I tried a uh, hundred pound monofilament, I tried some stainless steel wire to the main gear to the ink to the bumper of my car and trying to yank it up. Oh, uh, yeah, you know you're you've gone beyond that point. Uh, but the other part of it is like, uh, thankfully I have that big backup supply of parts. Uh, it's so important to have those consumables because you, uh, your reels will go down. You have to disassemble them to find out what's bad, what needs to be replaced. Then you create an order. Uh, it takes for me to get them. It's about a week to 10 days for a shipment to come in. Then you got to put them back together again. And hopefully you have all the correct parts. If you miss something, find out something else is broken, then you're still dead in the water. If you're missing just one piece, then you have to create another order, and it's another week that you're going to be down. And then for me, I just can't do that, and I especially can't miss weather windows, fishing opportunities when I need these guys up and running. So that's why, even though I've got enough parts where I can buy two brand new reels, uh, I just have to have those parts to keep these things maintained and up and running because even a brand new one in the month is going to be needing parts. So I've got like a parts list. I spent uh, about 90 bucks just to kind of resupply and uh, get some parts that I were at, was out of, but thankfully I didn't need. But just that I go through uh, a master list and then uh, just kind of make sure I've got two of these, three of these, knowing which parts are going to break down and are just maintenance issues every month and just get that built back up again because in a month we're going to be right back in the same spot. 
But uh, anyways, hopefully you found it a bit interesting or not. <laughs> it's just one of those things that's not all about fun of going out and fishing all the time. Uh, these windy days are excellent for me because I can get caught up on a bunch of stuff, especially the all about the bait store. But this maintenance stuff here, uh, the outboard's just similar to this. I'm always kind of having to maintain that. I've got the two outboards. So I've also got that big stash of supplies to keep me running there. Uh, but otherwise, it's time to go do some fishing. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye. And check this rubbish out. I just broke the tip off of my 10-weight uh, TFO. I wasn't even using it as. This was up on my rack. I've got it set on three pegs up on top. I was putting away my eight weight because I wanted to put everything away and then reorganize before I bring things back out again. And then this thing slipped off the little edge peg, fell down, and then I've got another middle peg and it basically seesawed on that and dragged that tip right across the ceiling beams and just snapped it right off. Golly, I wasn't even using it. But fortunately, I could order just the, the front tip part. It'd be like 30, 35 bucks. But golly, I wasn't even using it. Ugh.